Chapter Compensation After my conversation with Adam Hyung, I walked through the village in silence. There was still a festive atmosphere going on here. The members who had left with Hyung for two weeks to meet the client were boosting their mood. They danced, played pranks, shouted and sang. Aside from that, the cute children of the village and the wives of the members were gathering in groups of two and three and laughing. In addition, word had spread about Adam Hyung's proposal to eat and drink, resulting in small drinking parties happening here and there. The familiar feeling of the mercenary group spread. Everyone was enjoying the present as if there was no tomorrow. As a result, a warm and affectionate atmosphere permeated the village. We have to look at the future after the war, Berg. That's the only way to ensure the safety of the mercenary corps and the families of our members. I pondered over Hyung's words. The more the festive atmosphere continued, the more deeply Hyung, as words became embedded, as if I didn't know how I feel. A small girl suddenly came running and clung to my leg. Ice, the girl clinging to my leg didn't pay attention to me. She was focused on another boy coming to grab her. The girl shouted in an excited voice. It's ice because it's Berg's leg. Hey, be careful. The children enjoyed playing. Innocently. The girl clinging to my leg giggled, delighted by something. Startled by the girl's actions, her parents rushed over. Melissa. Let go of ice, Captain Berg's leg. Huh. Why? The girl's expression quickly turned gloomy. She looked up at me, her eyes welling up with tears. I said as I gently stroked her head, it's okay. The girl's face brightened. Again, with a bright smile, she looked at her parents and shouted, Berg said it's okay, Melissa. I looked at the girl's parents. They were a member who looked older than me, it's fine. They're just kids. He was reassured as well. I didn't want to disrupt the festive mood. Since I had been making such a small fuss, people started to notice my presence here and there. Vice Captain. Vice Captain. Vice Captain. Didn't you train too much yesterday? Cuck. Vice Captain. Come and have a drink. I declined their offer with a slight wave of my hand. There was one place I wanted to visit now. I tapped the forehead of the little girl clinging to my leg and said, All right, go. The little girl trembled and tilted her head slightly, surprised, and then let go of my leg and started running away again. The boy also chased after her. I briefly watched their retreating figures. For some reason, it was the day when someone seemed to overlap after a long time. The vice captain, as I walked, someone ran up to me. It was Baran, my aide. From his dim complexion, it seemed like he had been drinking. Even his lips were greasy. Nevertheless, he seemed to be making an effort to hide his intoxication. Beyond his shoulder, I noticed a woman gazing at Baran and me intently. A lover. When I asked quietly, Baran also looked back at her and replied, Yes. Do you change lovers every time? When did you bring her? I brought her during the last expedition. This time it's serious. At his response I laughed. You have quite the ability. Baron chuckled along with me. As for abilities, the vice captain is better. You were handsome. You were successful. Enough flattery. He. So, vice captain, is there anything you need? Unlike the daytime in a softer atmosphere, Baran asked me a personal question. I neither affirmed nor denied what he said. It must be because Adam Hyung, as proposal was still on my mind. I felt mentally prepared to tread new paths from the past, but my body felt immobile. I changed the subject. Baran, yes, vice, vice, captain. I apologize for earlier today. There was definitely a sense that I had pushed the training too hard recently. Adam Hyung said that the reason why I was so sharp was because I had no match. But the stories that I passed off as jokes in the past came to me with a sense of reality this time. Baron smiled in response to my apology. No, Vice Captain, I understand that you are doing this out of concern for the members. Go and have fun with your lover. Stop following me. Yes, see you later. Baron immediately turned around at my words. As he left, I found myself engulfed in unnecessary thoughts. Thoughts. It was a strange sensation, as if I were the only one without a partner. There was a time when I had someone closer to me than anyone else. Seven years have passed, so there weren't many days when I thought of sign, however, the void in my heart where she once occupied remained unfilled. As much as I knew what it felt like to have someone by my side, I also felt that same thirst. This loneliness wasn't easy to endure. I was just holding on. I sighed. My worries were deepening. The fact that I couldn't outright reject Adam Hyung's proposal indicated that there was a change within me. I visited the orphanage in the village. Many children shouted excitedly at my arrival. Berg, it's Berg. Thousands of children were running towards me as if pouring. The children were all enjoying the aroma of the delicious meat. 
Fortunately, the food was evenly distributed everywhere. I gently stroked the heads of the children gathered around me, one by one. These children were the offspring of fallen mercenaries. When the members died and even their mothers ran away, we took care of these children who were left behind. A young nun walked briskly following the children. B. Vice Captain. Berg, you have come again. It was Julia, a nun from an orphanage who served the God of Purity. Are there any problems? Julia nodded at my question. Without making eye contact with me, she looked down at the ground. The mischievous children who were observing that scene called out to me. Sister Julia, you were waiting for. Berg. Paul thunk. Sister Julia lightly tapped Paul's head. I laughed. Julia was restless at my laughter and she moved inward as if to take refuge. B. Vice Captain Berg, if you're here to eat, you're let's eat together. Offering me a meal while turning her back to me was just an added bonus. I also knew she had a favorable impression of me, to some extent, however, since my heart couldn't respond, I always pretended not to know. To avoid giving her any false hope this time I declined her. Proposal sorry, I came here because I had something to attend to, Paul come here, me. Paul who was being dragged by Julia with his head wrapped around her ran towards me. I heard it was your birthday yesterday. <laughs> it's late, but here's a gift. I handed Paul a pair of tough leather gloves. Paul accepted the gift and looked at the glove with shining eyes. Huh, wow. He jumped up and down happily with the glove in his hand. Other children gathered around him after seeing him receive the gift. I glanced at that. Heartwarming scene for a moment. To be honest, I felt sorry that I could only do this much. Paul's father was my subordinate. He served in my top henchman group and died in action. I didn't take care of them like this because I particularly liked children but it was a minimal courtesy for my comrades, who gave up their lives and left. Once again, it felt like I could hear Adam Hyung's words. We have to look at the future after the war, Berg. That's the only way to ensure the safety of the mercenary corps and the families of our members. If the red flames collapsed, the members were still strong, so they could find their own path. It might be difficult, but they could make ends meet. Somehow. They could support their families somehow, but what about these orphans? If these children leave Stockpin, they would have to live in nearby cities. Whether they could enter an orphanage or not was uncertain. If that happens, some of them would experience slum life like me. They would have to steal, fight, and survive in that dark atmosphere. Even a brief moment of thought told me that it was not right. What I promised to the dying members was not something like that. Reason constantly told me what choices were right but I couldn't shake off my indecision. Berg, thank you. At that moment Paul came and hugged me, in that small warmth. The heavy thoughts slowly peeled away. I blinked and looked at the children in front of me, and I let out a sigh, as if the worries in my mind were washed away my heart felt lighter. It was not a role I could always stick to stubbornly. Once a choice was made I felt refreshed. I nodded to Paul. And Paul, and yes, as I returned to the center of the village, a large bonfire was blazing. People gathered around it, dancing and singing. Everyone held drinks and meat in their hands and laughter filled the air. The festival was in full swing. In the midst of it all, I saw Adam Hyung standing. He was laughing and drinking with other members shoulder to shoulder. As I watched him for a moment, Adam Hyung noticed my presence. We exchanged glances from a distance. I finally nodded subtly. Adam Hyung responded with a gentle smile and nodded back at me. Nodded back at me.